Hello everyone, my name is Hemisha Bajaj and I am going to introduce you to the first chapter of the session, Computer and its Components. The topics covered in this chapter are Introduction to Computer, How does a computer work? What are the various input devices of a computer? What are the different output devices? the storage devices, the processing devices, what do you understand by the term humanware and what is technology addiction? Let us begin with introduction to computer. As you all know, a computer is an electronic machine that works according to the instructions given to it. It accepts the data, which is called the input, manipulates the data as per the specifications, which is called the processing, produce results, that is nothing but the output, and save the results in the storage devices for future use. So any computer follows an IPO cycle, which means input process output cycle. This slide shows the illustration of IPO cycle. The raw data is input into the system using input devices, which is further given for processing. The processing devices of the system process the raw data to give the meaningful information. This meaningful information is given to the output device for display or for the hard copy. The storage devices of the system store the intermediate or processed data while being processed. Now let us understand the terms related to computer. First and foremost, you must know what you mean by data. It is nothing but collection of words, numbers, images, or sounds. Computer processes this unorganized data to create meaningful information. What do you understand by the term instructions? They specify what must be done to data. A collection of such logically related instructions is called a computer program. The next term that you must know is processing. Transformation of the raw data into meaningful information is called processing. The next term is information. It is nothing but the processed data that is organized, meaningful, and useful. It is helpful to the user in making decisions. Storage. A computer often stores data, information, and instructions for future use. Who is the user? The person who uses the computer is called a user. What do you understand by the term hardware? All the physical components attached together to make a computer system are called hardware. You can feel and touch the hardware. The next related term is the software. It is nothing but the set of instructions organized for a common purpose that tells the computer hardware what to do and how to perform a particular job. What is network? It is a collection of computers and devices connected together via communication devices and transmission media. Networks allow computers to share resources such as hardware, software, data, and information. The next most popular term is Internet. It is a worldwide collection of networks that connects millions of business firms, government agencies, educational institutions, and individuals. Now let us understand the benefits of using a computer. The first and foremost being speed. A computer allows you to perform many tasks very fast. It can process a large amount of data very quickly. The second benefit is quality. A computer enables you to create high quality documents and drawings. Reliability. A computer is a reliable and accurate machine. It never makes mistakes by itself. It follows the GIGO principle, which means garbage in, garbage out. Only when the input is garbage, it produces garbage output. Otherwise, it is the most reliable and accurate machine. Storage capability is another benefit of using a computer. 
A computer can store enormous amount of data and make this data available for processing at any point of time when it is needed. Versatility. Versatility of computer means that the computer is able to perform various types of functions or operations. That is the reason that computers are used practically in every field these days. Diligence. Computer is called a diligent machine because it can perform the tasks repeatedly without losing its speed and accuracy for a long time. Unlike humans, it doesn't have to go for coffee or tea break. How does a computer work? It works on input process output cycle. The raw data is input into the system using input devices, which is further given for processing. The processing devices of the system process the raw data and produce meaningful information. This meaningful information is given to the output devices for the display. The storage devices in turn store the intermediate and the process data. Now let us understand the term input. Any data or instruction entered into a computer is known as input. An input device helps you to enter data and give commands to computer. Keyboard, mouse and scanner are examples of input devices. The next term that you must know is process. CPU is the main chip in the computer which is used to process data. Processing means treating the data according to the instructions and changing it in the form of information. What is output? The result of the processed data that we get on the output devices is called an output. These devices display information on screen, create printed copies, or generate sound. The examples of output devices are monitor, printer, speakers, etc. Storage. The computer stores data and information on the storage device for the future use. The computer uses information stored on the storage device to perform tasks. Examples of storage devices are hard disk, pen drive, CDs, DVDs, etc. Now let us understand the input devices in detail. Any hardware component that allows you to enter data, instructions and commands into a computer is called an input device. The given illustration shows you the pictures of various input devices. The most popular example of input device is the keyboard. It is an input device that contains keys. You press its keys to type information and enter instructions for the computer to follow. Desktop computer keyboards typically have 101 to 105 keys. These keyboards are often attached via cable to a USB port on the system unit. Now let us see the different types of keyboards. The first one is wireless keyboard. It is a battery powered device that transmits data to the system unit using wireless technology. The wireless keyboard is connected to the system via Bluetooth receiver, which gets plugged in to the USB port. The next type is compact keyboard. The laptop computers, some handheld computers and mobile device often use a compact keyboard, which usually does not include the numeric keypad. These keyboards are permanently attached to the system unit. The third type is the virtual keyboard. It is a software component that allows a user to enter text. Some devices like smartphones and tablets have on-screen or virtual keyboards instead of physical keyboard. The fourth type is Braille keyboard. It is a type of keyboard which is meant for the blind or visually impaired people to input information in a computer. It is characterized by series of dots on each key in a Braille cell. On this slide, you can see the picture of a virtual keyboard and a Braille keyboard. Now let us see what is mouse. It is a pointing device that fits comfortably under the palm of your hand. It is used to select or move items on the screen as well as provide instructions for the computer to follow. The top of a mouse has two buttons and a scroll wheel. The bottom of the mouse is flat and contains mechanism that detects the movement of the mouse. 
Now let us see the different types of mouse. The first one is mechanical mouse. It has a rubber ball on its underside. As a user moves the mouse, the ball rolls with these movements. This detects the mouse movement in any direction. The second type is the optical mouse. It uses laser technology to compare and track the position of the mouse. The third type is wireless mouse. It is a battery powered device that transmits data through wireless technology, such as, such as radio waves or infrared light waves. This slide shows the pictures of a mechanical, optical, and wireless mouse. As you can see here, there's a small ball underneath the surface of mechanical mouse. When you move the mouse, the ball rolls, and that causes the movement of the cursor on the screen. The optical mouse uses the laser technology for the movement of the cursor. The wireless mouse has a small Bluetooth receiver, which gets plugged in to the USB port. Next type of mouse is the air mouse. It is a newer type of motion sensing mouse that in addition to the typical buttons allows you to control objects by moving the mouse in predetermined directions through the air. Touch mouse. It is a touch sensitive mouse that recognizes touch gestures. For example, you press a location on a touch mouse to simulate a click. Sweep your thumb on the mouse to scroll pages or slide multiple fingers across the mouse to zoom. The slide shows the pictures of air mouse and the touch mouse. The touch mouse has got the touch sensitive surface which recognizes the touch gestures, whereas the air mouse can be moved in predetermined direction to capture the movement. Touchpad is an example of another input device. It is a flat, pressure-sensitive surface that is used on notebook computers and laptops. You can move the pointer on the screen by moving your finger along the surface of the pad. You can tap the pad surface to perform various mouse operations. Some touchpads recognize touch gestures such as swipe, pinch, and stretch motions. Joystick is a popular input device used while playing computer games. It is a pointing device which is used to control the actions in a computer game. It has a vertical lever mounted on a base. You can move the lever in different directions to control the actions in a game. The next example of input device is graphic tablet. It is also called digitizer. It is an input device which has a special pen, which is also known as stylus, to write on it. It is used to draw images on the computer as well as to give instructions to the computer. Touch screen. It is a screen that you can touch with your finger to input information. Your finger acts as the pointing device. Tablets, smartphones, ATMs use touch screen to input instructions. Next example of input device is motion input. It lets the user guide on-screen elements using air gestures. Air gestures involve moving your body or a handheld input device through the air. With motion input, a device containing a camera detects your gesture and then converts it to a digital signal that is sent to a computer or game device. Gamers can swing their arm or a controller to simulate rolling or bowling a ball down a lane. You can see here the pictures depicting motion input. Digital camera. It is also called Digicam. It is an electronic input device used to capture and store photographs electronically in the computer. A smart digital camera can also communicate wirelessly with other devices and can include apps similar to those on a smartphone. Microphone. It is a voice input device used to send a voice into the computer. It can be used for instant messaging that supports voice conversations 
chat rooms that support voice chats and voice recognitions. Right now, I'm using a microphone to record my voice onto this video. Scanner. It is an input device used to send images and text directly into a computer. You can scan images such as photographs, drawings, and logos into a computer. There are two types of scanners, flatbed scanner and handheld scanner. The flatbed scanner works similar to a photocopy machine, except that it creates a file in computer memory instead of paper copy. The handheld scanner is a portable device that can be held in one hand. It is dragged over the object to be scanned. It is mostly used in shopping centers. The slide here shows the pictures of flatbed scanner and handheld scanner. You must have seen handheld scanner at the billing counters in shopping malls. Barcode reader. Most products in the shops have barcodes on them. A barcode is a set of lines of different thickness that gives information about the product like its price, manufacturing date, etc. The barcode reader, also called a barcode scanner, is used to input data from barcodes. Magnetic Ink Character Reader, MICR. It is an input device used to read and identify magnetized characters printed on a document such as check. It is used in the banks to check the validity of the checks. The check number at the bottom of the check is written with a special ink with iron oxide particles. This device checks the presence of the iron oxide particles to check the validity of the checks. Now let us see the various examples of output devices. What is an output device? It is any hardware component that can convey information to a user. The most popular examples of output devices are monitor, printer, speaker, smart board, etc. Now let us see what is a monitor. It is an output device that looks like your TV screen. It displays work done by you or the information you get after processing. Information displayed on monitor is digital and is displayed temporarily. It is also called a soft copy. Monitor is also called screen, display, video, etc. Now let us see the next output device, which is a printer. It is an output device that gives you the output on a physical medium such as paper called printouts. The printout is also called a hard copy. Printers can be classified into impact and non-impact printers. Printers that have direct contact between the printer head and paper are called impact printers. Printers that do not have direct contact between the printer head and paper are known as non-impact Here you can see the pictures of an impact printer and a non-impact printer. Let us see the different types of printers. The first example is laser printer. It is a non-impact printer that uses laser technology to print text or images on paper. It gives the best quality output and is expensive. The speed of this printer is given in PPM pages per minute. The next type is an inkjet printer. It is a non-impact printer that outputs text and images by spraying ink on the paper. Inkjet printers produce the text and graphics in both black and white and color. The speed of this printer is given in LPM, which means lines per minute. Dot matrix printer. It is an impact printer that contains movable print head with pins that strike the ribbon, placing a dot on the paper. They are less expensive, slow in working, and are noisy. The speed of the printer is given in CPS, which means characters per second. Here on the slide, you can see the picture of the output produced by the dot matrix printer. 
Each character is nothing but the combination of dots. These dots are produced when the print head strikes the ribbon and prints the letter onto the paper. Another example of an output device is a speaker. The speakers are output devices that produce music, speech, or other sounds that your computer generates or processes. Data projector. A data projector is an output device that projects the data being displayed on a computer screen on larger screen so that the audience can see the image clearly. Smart board. It is an output device that displays the image on a connected computer screen, usually via data projector. Notes written on it can be saved directly on the computer. These are used frequently in classrooms as a teaching tool and to enhance the delivery of presentations. The smart board can be hung on a wall or mounted on a stand. The picture shows a smart board mounted on the wall. Now let us see what are storage devices. They enable you to store data and information. They can hold data, instructions, and information for future use. The examples are hard disk, optical disk, compact disk, pen drives, etc. Let us understand what is a hard disk. The hard drive, also called the hard disk drive or HDD, or the hard disk is a main permanent storage area of your computer. It sits inside the computer case and stores your programs and documents. It is a disk pack that consists of many circular platters that use magnetic particles to store data and information. Most hard drives have storage capacities from 500 GB to 8 TB and even more. The picture here shows an internal hard disk and an external hard disk which is a portable device and can be plugged in to the USB port. Optical disk. It is a type of storage media that consists of a flat, round, portable disk that is written and read by laser. Some optical disks are read-only, others are read or write. Computers have optical disk drive installed in the system unit. On this slide, you can see the pictures of an optical disk and an optical disk drive where you can insert the optical disk. The example of an optical disk is a compact disk. A compact disk, also known as CD, is a flat and round storage medium, usually 4.75 inches in diameter. A CD-ROM is an abbreviation for compact disk read-only memory that may contain text, graphics, sound, and videos. It can hold up to 700 MB of data, instructions, and information. CD-ROM drive is used to read data from CD-ROM disk. DVD-ROM, digital versatile or video disk. It is very similar to CD-ROM but can store much more data. A DVD can hold from 4 GB to 7.5 GB of data. Now let us understand what is CDR and DVDR. The R here stands for recordable. The CDR, also called compact disc recordable, is a type of write once, read many compact disc format that allows one-time recording on a disc. Once the data is recorded on the disc, you can read multiple times. The same principle applies for DVDR. The next type of optical discs are CDRW and DVDRW. The RW stands for rewritable. CDRW or compact disc rewritable is a compact disc format that allows repeated recording on a disc just like a pen drive. Same principle applies for DVDRW. Blu-ray disc. It is a new DVD format which has a higher capacity and better quality than standard DVDs. A Blu-ray disc has a storage capacity of 100 GB.
or more. BD drives and players are used to play or run Blu-ray discs. The next type of storage device is a flash drive. They are also known as pen drives. They are one of the newest forms of computer storage devices that plug in a USB port on a computer. Pen drive is a portable and lightweight device. It has a storage capacity ranging from 512 MB to 100 GB and can transfer data at a very high speed. Pen drives are called as flash drives because the type of memory used in pen drive is a flash memory. Flash memory is non-volatile, therefore no power required to retain the data. In other words, data is not lost when there is no power and provides faster read and write cycles. Memory card. It is a removable storage device, usually of 1.5 inches in height or width. You can insert it into a memory card slot in the computer, mobile device or card reader. Now let us understand a processing device. A processing device or a processor is the main chip in the computer which is used to process data. Processing means treating the data according to the instructions and changing it in the form of information. The processor or the CPU. The CPU is a processing device of a computer. It is an abbreviation for Central Processing Unit. It is also known as the brain of the computer. It performs all the calculations and processes data into information. It receives the input from input devices and processes them. It consists of three units, ALU, CU, and MU. Now let us understand ALU. ALU stands for Arithmetic Logic Unit. The arithmetic logic unit is that component of the CPU which performs arithmetic comparisons and logical operations. The arithmetic operations include basic calculations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. The comparison operations involve comparing one data item with another. Arithmetic operations use conditions along with logical operators such as AND, OR and NOT. The control unit and the memory unit. The control unit controls all the functions of a computer. It checks the results given by ALU and controls the flow of information to the output device. The memory unit or MU holds the data that needs to be processed as well as the data that has already been processed by the CPU. So these are the three main components of central processing unit. Now let us see which are the companies that manufacture CPU chips. The biggest manufacturer of CPU is Intel, which makes Pentium and Celeron processors. The other CPU maker is AMD, which manufactures the Samperin and Athlon chips. Macintosh computers used to come with PowerPC chips made by Motorola. Multi-core processor. Most processor chip manufacturers offer multi-core processors. A processor core contains the circuitry necessary to execute instructions. A dual-core processor is a chip that contains two separate processor cores. A quad-core processor is a chip with four separate processor cores. Now the next term that we are going to understand is human way. It refers to the persons who program, design, or operate a computer. A human being who is using a computer is known as a user. Ergonomics. It is the study of people, their physical characteristics, and the ways in which they function in relation to their working environment, the furnishings, and the machines they use. The main goal of ergonomics is to incorporate comfort efficiency and safety into the design of keyboards, computer desks, chairs, and other things at the workplace. Back and neck strain can be avoided if the chair provides proper support and the monitor is placed properly at the eye level. The picture here shows why ergonomics matters. What should be the correct posture of the user when he or she is sitting in front of the computer? 
Now let us understand the correct monitor placement. The top edge of the monitor should be at the eye level or slightly lower than that. You can use monitor stand to raise the monitor to the appropriate level on your desk in case you are using a laptop. You must avoid the wrist strain. To prevent wrist strain while typing, keep your elbows leveled with the keyboard. While using a mouse, move the mouse with your entire arm instead of just your wrist. Let us understand what should be the correct posture when you are sitting in front of your computer. Your feet should be flat on the floor. You should not lean forward or slouch in your chair. You should shift positions often and stand up to stretch your arms and legs at least once an hour. The chair. Fully adjustable chairs that provide support for the lower back should be preferred. Now let us understand how to reduce the fatigue. By applying principles of ergonomics, you can maximize your comfort and safety. It will reduce many health problems like headache, vision problems and wrist pain. Carpal tunnel syndrome or CTS. It is a rapidity stress injury whose symptoms include numbness, tingling and pain in the fingers. This condition affects people who type without proper wrist support or who type for long periods of time without breaks. To prevent this, follow the given steps. Take frequent breaks to exercise your arms and hands. Do not rest your wrists on the edge of the desk. Keep your forearms and wrists leveled so that your wrists do not bend. Keep your shoulders, arms, hands and wrists relaxed while you work. Maintain good posture and stop working if you experience pain or fatigue. The picture in the slide shows the pain in the wrist, forearm and the upper back which is caused due to rapidity stress injury. Computer Vision Syndrome or CVS It is a technology related health condition that affects high sight. You may have CVS if you have sore, tired, burning, itching or dry eyes. This is a condition which happens when you sit in front of the computer for long periods of time. To prevent these symptoms, you should follow the given steps. Every 15 to 30 minutes, take an eye break. Look into distance and focus on an object for 20 to 30 seconds. Roll eyes in complete circle. Blink your eyes every 5 seconds. Place the display about an arm's length away from your eyes. Use large fonts to avoid strain. Now let us be aware of this term technology addiction. Technology addiction occurs when some technology users become obsessed with computers, mobile devices and the internet and consume their entire social life. Symptoms of a user with technology addiction include the following. He or she always desires for computer time and is overjoyed when using a computer. He or she is unable to stop using technology and feels irritable when not using technology. The user neglects family and friends and problems at work or school. So these are the few symptoms that a person is suffering from technology addiction. With this, I end my presentation. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you.